of the graph here is a uh, four regular on seven vertices. Now the question here is, are they isomorphic? First of all, we need to know what is the meaning of isomorphic. For two graph isomorphic, let's say G1 and G2 are isomorphic, then we are always able to find a mapping from the vertex set of G1 to the vertex set of G2, such that two vertices adjacent in G1, if and only if the image are adjacent in G2. You may stay at it for three, five minutes and pause the video now and think about it, whether they are isomorphic. Pause the video now if you wish to solve it. Keep watching the video once ready. One of the common way that people use is consider the subgraph. Let's say it consists of triangle, how many triangle in G1 and how many triangle in G2. Personally, I do not encourage you to use this method because for example, there are many triangles here. And also, there are quite a number of triangles here. So sometimes it's quite confusing unless the special case whereby the first graph do not have triangle at all but the, the other graph have more than one triangle then it's okay to argue in that way so maybe before that i give you an example on how to see two graphs are isomorphic let's say for example this graph here and the other graph i will say that these two graphs are isomorphic and if you label the vertices as a b C, D, E, and this is let's say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Then I can do a mapping and I just write into this form A, B, C, D, E. This is the only degree 2 vertices. So if they are isomorphic, it must map to the only degree 2 vertex here. So this will be 2. And it joins to B, D. And vertex 2 adjacent to vertices 1 and 3. So BD, one of it must be 1, the other one must be 3. So I just tried it and see whether it works. And in fact, in this case, we can have this is 4 and 5. Or 5 and 4, it doesn't matter. So how are we going to check whether this mapping is good? We can check by saying, let's say A and D, they are adjacent in this graph. So correspondingly, 2 and 3 has to adjacent in the other graph. Or 3, 5 is adjacent here. So DE has to be also adjacent. By giving out an isomorphism, then we are able to show that these two graphs indeed are isomorphic. So back to this question. Let me label it as 1, 2. I will say that it map 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 to 1 to A. Now, 1 to A, then 2 to D, and 3 to G, 4 to C, 5 to F, 6 to B, 7. E. So we can interpret in this way. Note that there are two uh, cycles. One is the outer cycle, the other one is the inner circle. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and go back to 1, is the outer circle. And we have 1, 3, 5, 7, 2, 4, 6, go back to 1, is the inner circle. The mapping that we have here is we change the outer circle become the inner circle, inner circle become the outer circle. And this is one way to prove it. For this G3, we can also show that it is in fact isomorphic to these two graphs. We are not going to present in this way. Rather, we are using the idea of complement. The complement graph of G is denoted by G bar. So when we compare G and G bar, they have exactly the same vertex set. Two vertices are adjacent in G if and only if the corresponding vertices is not adjacent in G bar. 
we can consider what is a G1 bar for this graph. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1 is not adjacent to 4. 4 is not adjacent to 7. 7 is not adjacent to 3. And so on and so forth. And this is actually a C7. G2 bar, you will be 1, 2, 3. And you will see that this is G2 bar. And again, this is C7. So for G3 bar, 1, 2, 3. This vertex does not connect to this vertex here. And it does not connect to this vertex. And not connect to this. 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 It is again a C7. Now, what we can conclude here is the complement of G1 is isomorphic to the complement of G2 and is isomorphic to the complement of G3. And two graph is isomorphic if and only if their complement are isomorphic. G1, G2, and G3 are all isomorphic.